my name is Jessica Griffiths and I'm finishing my third year as a bioengineering PhD student in the lab of Sarkis Mazmanian. Today, Professor Dave has asked me to share what I do and why I love it. First, you might be wondering what bioengineering means, and bioengineering is a vague term that means the application of engineering principles of design and analysis to biological systems and biomedical techniques. In my lab, we work on studying the gut-brain axis, which is the routes of communication between the gut and the brain. You may have heard about the gut microbiome, which is the trillions of microbes that live in our gut. The gut microbiome is really important um, for the digestion of certain food components that we can't break down ourselves, and also for the development of a properly functioning immune system, which is important to keep us healthy. What you may not know is that the gut microbiome is also important for the development and function of nervous systems. Yes, like the brain. Additionally, the enteric nervous system, or the ANS, which is the nervous system of the gut, can act independently of the brain. The enteric nervous system looks completely different from the brain and is not so densely packed. Instead, it spans the entire 30-foot length of the gut and is important for gastrointestinal motility, such as pushing food contents through the gut, as well as many other important functions. Uh, certain neurological conditions such as anxiety and depression, epilepsy, and autism spectrum disorder have all been linked to the gut microbiome. Though these studies have largely been done in mouse models um, and have been done in the lab. I specifically am studying gastrointestinal dysfunction in a mouse model of autism spectrum disorder. Individuals with an autism diagnosis are at least three times more likely to suffer from a chronic gastrointestinal problem than those without. These problems include chronic constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and gastroesophageal reflux. My hypothesis is that the same mutations that are connected to the behaviors associated with autism and mouse models of autism are also causing changes in the enteric nervous system or the second brain, which causes changes in the gut microbiome and downstream changes in the whole body. My preliminary results have shown that the gastrointestinal motility and susceptibility to inflammation is different in the mouse model of autism versus wild type mice, but I still am not sure why these differences have occurred. Identifying the root of gastrointestinal issues and developing treatments for them will have a significant impact on the quality of life for people with an autism diagnosis that also suffer from these issues. In the lab, I use many different techniques to study the gut. With the help of friends in the Gradnaru lab just across the hall, I use engineered virus to express fluorescent protein in neurons of the gut as shown in red in this image. In order to make the virus, I use cells as factories to produce it and then I purify the virus before I inject it into mice. This virus does not cause a large inflammatory response so the mice do not get sick, which makes it a very useful tool. I am using this tool to study the neurological differences in the mouse model of autism versus the wild type mice. In order to look at these differences, I take the gut tissue and I remove the outer layer, which is the myenteric plexus and has much of the enteric nervous system. And then I mount this segment on slides and I look at it under the microscope. This process is very long and takes a lot of patience, but in the end, the images are beautiful. I also study the action of neurons in the gut through gut motility. In an organ bath, the gut can continue to contract for many hours. I use this tool to compare the gut contraction patterns between the mouse model of autism and the wild type mice. I also look at gene expression changes in the gut using real-time polymerase chain reaction. 
constantly, cells are producing genetic transcripts, uh, which are called mRNA. Scientists can tell what genes are being expressed by extracting the mRNA from the tissue and designing specific primers that amplify short regions of this transcript um, and perform a reaction in a qPCR machine that amplifies that transcript over and over again. The amount of the transcripts correlates with the fluorescent signal. I can use this technique to see what neuronal and immunological transcripts are different between the mouse model of autism and the wild type mice. I like being in the lab for many reasons. I'm pretty much the boss of what I do every day because my PhD advisor is very supportive of lab members pursuing their own interests within the gut brain field. I get to study what I want to and design experiments based on what I want to discover. Plus, I am learning many skills from talented scientists that I'm fortunate enough to call my lab mates. Our lab is a fun environment with people from many different backgrounds and many different interests that all are excited about studying the gut-brain axis. The energy in lab is infectious and when I present my work, I get very excited to talk to other scientists and discuss their passions and share my own. Don't get me wrong, there are many tough days as well. Sometimes an experiment takes many weeks only to get to a dead end. Sometimes I make a careless mistake and I have to do the experiment all over again. And sometimes I don't know what I'm doing because I'm doing an experiment for the first time. And sometimes I'm really just tired and I don't want to do anything. But when I get the hang of something or when I do an experiment again the second time and I do it right, it is extremely satisfying and it makes it worth it. Another important part about having a balanced life as a PhD student is doing things outside of science. Since I'm at Caltech, I get to enjoy a lot of things about being in sunny Southern California, like using the mountains for hiking and going to the beaches to relax and going to all of the different restaurants and eating really good food. I am also an animal lover and I have a crested gecko, a chihuini, which is a cross between a chihuahua and a dachshund, and a cat, which I love to spend uh, a lot of my free time with. All of these things help me keep my life a bit more balanced. I would say my scientific interest started, like many other people, um, with a love of the outdoors and catching bugs and frogs and toads. I grew up in Corpus Christi, which is in South Texas, and I was sandwiched right between um, the creek and marsh environment and uh, the beach and marine life. I went to Rice University in Houston, Texas, where I got my Bachelor's of Science in Bioengineering. My first laboratory experience actually had nothing to do with what I'm doing now and was focused on using stem cells to develop heart patches for infants. My second lab experience was studying how the gut microbiome impacts intestinal inflammation and is what sparked my interest for what I'm studying now. On the side, I am also working on starting up a science communication project with my sister who has an artistic and creative background um, and together our goal is to explain topics relevant to biology and medicine in a clear and visually appealing way without the barrier of certain scientific terminology. You can follow us at Science Translators on Instagram and Twitter or follow me personally on Twitter at Just Got Guts. Thanks so much, Professor Day, for inviting me here to share my work, and I hope that this inspires people to read more about the gut microbiome and the enteric nervous system and why it's important. See you guys later!